Welcome back to the Talking Walls podcast. My name is Matthew Cooper and today we're joined by none other than Dave as a party. Dave, how are you feeling, mate? Very well. It's very tired, mate, but other than that, all good, thank you. I'm going to say, me and you got always like piss holes in the snow, haven't we? I should have had a disco not this afternoon, but I, I haven't, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then we're joined by Finners. Finn, how are you? Are you as tired as us? Yeah, feelings are shared, mate. I think we're all we're all down, but we're gonna for an hour now. We'll uh, we'll yeah. get this going. We'll have a party. This is why I mean to do it every week. <laughs> I'd have been so positive a few days ago, but now we're uh, yeah, Being dangerous. Yeah. yeah, and a familiar face back on the podcast after his little Woo. break last week. Here we go, Tom <clears throat> Parker. Tom, I hope you're full of beans. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I'm, I'm probably to be honest, I'm probably as tired as you guys. I've just got done doing a teaching course this weekend, so I've been uh, in from. Most you about you just, 11 and hours. Podcast, don't you just suck it up? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. We're all half asleep. Let's call yeah. it quits whilst we're ahead. No, yeah. it's good to be back. I was uh, very unceremoniously booted off on the last episode. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was my call, purely because we're talking about, I don't know if you got caught the last episode, but we're talking about all the kind of problems that have, have, have occurred at, at Wolves over the last six months. And Tommy's extremely opinionated. I wanted someone a little bit more balanced. Um, <laughs> hey, look, I tell you how it is. AKA, he talks shit and I want to marry Manslon. I don't mince, I don't mince my words. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't, mate. Anyway, it's good to have you back on. Today, we're going to be talking about the, the win at Watford, the first win of the season in the league, which, um, which, which was lovely. And then we're going to talk about the Brentford game, which wasn't so lovely. Uh, we're going to talk about how Dave called Brentford gash and how it's oh, all his brilliant. fault. And yeah. uh, <laughs> then we're going to preview the Spurs game and we've got loads of questions to get through. So, Dave, we'll start with you. What, what for the way? Didn't make mm-hmm. it, did you? But did you manage to catch yeah. the game? Yeah, I caught it, mate. Somehow found a stream. I think a lot of people were struggling. Uh, well, yeah, I was I was at work, so I thought, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll catch it on a stream. And, yeah, we, it's, I think uh, ignoring sort of yesterday's game, which I'm sure we'll talk about, it was probably out of our four Premier League games the I don't want to say worse, but probably the game we didn't have as much dominance as I think we were expecting, um, and just had to remain patient. And you know, we we, we got that goal in the end. For, quite fortunate that opening goal, the own goal. But then you could just looked at our bench and the players that we were able to bring on. Huang came on, obviously scored the goal. Pedence came off the bench, created the goal, uh, more or less. Um, so the quality we've got on the bench now, everyone's sort of back and fit is good. And, and I think that was a big factor in, in helping us win at Watford. And it's just good to get off the mark, isn't it? You know, they they didn't really create huge amounts of chances themselves. But we just, uh, you know, we took our opportunities in the end and got a well-earned three points, I thought. Yeah, I think we tro- we, we kept them at arm's length. They had, a good, they had a good chance in the... First half, where it rolled across the front of the um, the six yard box, and a, a tap from a Watford player that would have scored. And I think Sissoko had a chance where he stuck at the near post, and Jose Sar made a good save. But apart from that, Wolves had the lion's share of the opportunities. But once that first goal fin went in, did you did you feel like not only the fans but the players were all breathed a collective sigh of relief? Definitely, yeah, because as Dave said, in those first four games, if there was a goal where if there was a game where we didn't deserve a goal almost the least or whatever, that would have been the Watford game. And as you say, we were down in that left hand corner when they were attacking in the first half, and I thought they were going to score. So for us to get a goal, it was only going to come the way it did, because we can't score ourselves. So it was going to be someone else knocking one in, and then we hope that they'd flow after that. But no, yeah, it felt like that. It did feel like a sort of it wasn't a full celebration because it was like, oh my God, like. We can't score our own goals, but we they, they did come in the end. But it was it was a sort of relief and we passed the ball around nicely after that. I think Pedence and Huang made a big difference in that though. I think Pedence for me in that game changed it. He he's got that pass, like the the pass before the pass that I don't think we sort of had before that, the sort of inventive little oh, I wasn't expecting that. And I really enjoyed his performance there. So yeah, it was good to get that first goal. And I think it was only about 75th minute, wasn't it? It was actually later than I, I remember it being. Mm. 74, 75th minute. So yeah, I thought the goals would fly after that. I know this is why we've got other games to go on to, but at that moment, yeah, very, very positive. And I, I thought the goals are here. We go. We needed a known goal, but now they're going to flow. But yeah. yeah, a Wolves manager making substitutions that have a positive impact on the game. I have to pinch myself. Um, <laughs> what, what, Tom, what did you think of uh, what did you make of Huang's debut and Pedence coming on? Oh, last season, I was, you know, I was 
thought about Pedenza as well, selling if someone comes in. But shackles are off from what they say, aren't they? So it'd be interesting to see how he does play. But what were your thoughts on, on those two players? Yeah, no, I I, I thought Pedenza was, was really impressive. Um, I, I think one of the things that has been has, has shown so far is I think players like him are going to benefit a lot from the system. As well as I think eventually players like you know Adama and Huang are going to come in. Uh, we'll come on to Raul in a second, of course. Um, but I was impressed with both of them. I think Huang shows a good amount of energy, presses well, he's got good movement, um, and he's good on the ball as well. Good, uh, it's good to have a lot, sort of a poacher in the box. So that last season there were so many times where we got a ball across the edge of the box and or across the box, and there was just no one there to to tap it in. Um, but it was it was good to see him get his first goal. It was fortuitous a little bit, I think. Um, mm. But you know you can't you can't miss a tap in. But they, they all count. It was good for him as well. It was good for the views as well on the YouTube channel. I'll tell you what, <laughs> the difference was just ridiculous. South Korean pull, yeah, no, impressive both of them to be honest. Have you had many South Korean pulls, Tom? Uh, <laughs> I've never been there, so. But maybe if I maybe when I do go there in a few years, probably or maybe I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I'll keep you all updated on Twitter. Finn, is 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 He Chan Wang now like that? Your your new Jimenez is he is he the one you're going to go for? Is it going to be Huang substituted in Wolves two 0 defeat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm a loyal man. Raul still on the wall here. Oh God, it's flipped in at these cameras. There it is, yeah. still on the wall. And I think most importantly, Raul has about three million Instagram followers. So um, he's still up there for me. He's still much much bigger. That's why he's starting at the moment. Have, um, <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Russell Jones is yeah, picking just, the team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, marketing genius. <laughs> just think of the likes when he gets the that goal. Marketing genius. But no, yeah, it's marketing good to. Uh, <laughs> Wolves aren't stupid, are they? They've got players. I, I mean, they're brilliant players on their own, but there's that added bonus of obviously trying to hit the Asian market, South American market. So it's added bonuses. But no, yeah, Huang, it's looking good at the moment. Obviously, Son's their current Jimenez to Mexico, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. But you never know. Maybe he can. How, you follow, how many followers has Huang? Oh, he's only got 100, not so many. 109k. Talking wolves. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm getting <laughs> on, Huang. <laughs> do, do, do you believe that that's the reason why they, they've signed him as well, Dave? Or do you think it's purely on profiles? Uh, probably a bit of both. But I mean, from the impact he's had on already, I think he's a good player. It, yeah, We haven't really seen much of him. I think Wednesday. Uh, against Spurs will be a good test because I'd assume he'll start. But when he came on yesterday, he was on like, you know, first touch of the game, you know, was driving the ball forward. He was like trying to hype up the South Bank as he well within like yeah, a, minute, a minute coming on. He just, he was really like the work rate was, was really, really good. But I don't know. I don't mean they, I don't mean they would ever sign a player. Well, I was going to say ever sign a player just because of the marketing ability, but then you look at some of the players that signed for the twenty threes from from China. Have all been so. now this this is fair. They have all been gashed. They have so um, <laughs> they're turning to well beaters. Now you've said that Dave. Yeah. you've cursed Dave, that. Dave has a party gashed yeah. back, and we need one. <laughs> get your dong <laughs> Get your dong Dahi number Jesus nine Christ. shirts at the ready. Oh, Do God. you reckon they they signed dong Dahi because he was a, a tremendous footballer? Or oh, I no. seen him in spa. I saw him in spa once. After after he did well for me on Football Manager, I should have asked for a selfie. But now nah, I think, um, uh, yeah, yeah, a bit of both. I think the quality's there. Definitely the quality's there. But that always helps, he's, I suppose. He's done to he's still a Wolves player. Yeah, he's out on loan in China. He had like a two year loan in China. I think they're pretty much like Ming Yang Yang's gone. Uh, the other one. Um, the other one, I can't remember his name. The the, young, who, who, the little lad that the little yeah, lad that was, played. He was quite like a bit. really skillful. He was that, that Hong smooth. Wan. He's gone now. Hong, Hong Wan. That's um, the one. Yeah. So I think and they had one of one, but I think Dong De he's the only one left now. When you say the other one, that's like when fans Sunday say, as well. M- 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 yeah, Sunday as well. What was his name? Oh then? yeah, was it? Where did he go? Sunday. Monday, Sunday, happy days. No, he, he must have been Sunday. Well. <laughs> yeah, um, when, when when fans can't can't either pronounce my scarer's name or remember him, like, the, the, the other one, the Colombian yeah, fella. Yeah. So, come on, man. your son, <laughs> your daughter, your, your son, son. And your daughter. <laughs> yeah, I I agree. That one on on Huang, he uh, he just takes the the game by the scruff of the neck, doesn't he? And mm. he shows some good. He's like he's been plugged into the mains. He just runs around like a sometimes a little bit aimlessly. But he's in his legs, good. though. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, yeah. They're powerful. Oh, right. right. He's, he's, he's got powerful legs. Mm. I saw. I was, yeah. I was watching those uh, workout videos and stuff. I was, he, he's he's going to be rapid. His pedence is quite similar because he's quite small, but he's stocky. And players like that tend to be quite explosive. So I think he's going to be useful playing as a second striker. Yeah, do you often look at players' legs, Tom? <laughs> um, no, no. I know what you it's mean. All about profi- it's all about profiles, isn't it? Do you reckon they've signed him because of his legs? Yeah, Pedence's no. legs are ridiculous, aren't they? Like he's got the stockiest legs I've ever seen. I mean, I've seen longer legs on a coffee table, but his legs are like them. <laughs> I think I'm a bit taller on. than him, you know. Oh yeah. Well, Pedence. Yeah, I think, five, yeah. Five, five, I, I'd hope so. I'm I'm Five, Sorry. six, five, seven ish. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you were quite tall. T- well, not tall, but I thought you were no. no I looked, I look, I look massive. I look like a unit, but in real life, <laughs> it's just, just a told you bit, that, mate. Just a little bit smaller. <laughs> Next yeah. podcast is going to be like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I look like a ex militant. Yeah. You, you look like tall and slender, but yeah, you're, you're small and slender. Slender man. Yeah. Oh man, anyway. I'm built like a brick shit house. Yeah, okay. I've met you, mate. That's you, see, you, see, okay. you see this? You see that bench press in the back? That's not stood there doing nothing. Yeah, for all, for all those listening on Spotify and Apple, can you see that bench press in the back? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You see the dust on it. Just, ima- yeah. just imagine it. Yeah. Just he's imagine. Got a, he's got a bench I'll, press. He's got two I'll bags of sugar. Ba- yeah. what, what he's got that two kilogram dumbbells on his bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, man. Anyway, moving on from from Tom's lack of size, I make up for it in other areas. Yeah, well, let's leave that one. <laughs> Toes. <laughs> oh, the, the podcast has gone off the rails already. 11 minutes oh, in, not even yeah. 10 minutes in. Um, so, <laughs> Finn, go, go to you because you're the one who's not saying much. Um, anyone who stood out for you in that? I know you said Pedence changed the game, but is there anyone else who stood out for you in, in that performance? Neves again was, um, was up there. There's a few that stood out. For starting to get worries, really sorry to go negative, but like there's a few that sort of were creeping in uh, definitely down that left side when say some Marcel, I think it was um and Gakia and Saar and Sissoko were combining down that side to to expose them. But to try and flip it positively, I thought Neves was good. Um, Trincao was probably his best game. He set up a the gorgeous pass to Samedo, who somehow missed both of those chances. Um, mm. I'm trying to keep somehow wandering into a negative here, so I'll go, yeah, Trincao and, and Neves had their. Had very good games and Treore. I wish I think Watford had been playing Cathcart at right back, and I was really hoping yeah. for that. But I think he still did well against Ngakia, a smaller, faster player. But um, he's got performances mostly all round. But the warning signs were there as to how to get at Wolves. I think in in, in games to come. I was going to say, man, there's only Cody there. He didn't mention in glowing terms. Is that part of an agenda that you're fueling? He's on a delay again, isn't he? He's oh god, he's on next door's uh, internet. That's awful. That's yeah, awful. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, kind of Cody, Matt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 I agree. I agree, mate. That left hand side it worries me. It really does worry me. Um, Sace hasn't started great, and I've seen. Uh, and I'll, I'll ask Dave this. I've, I've seen a lot of fans saying Marcel's been really good. I think he's been okay. Um, I, I think defensively he's good. He couldn't cross his eyes. When you get into some really good positions, and our, and our left our left wing backs and right wing backs do, Dave, what what's your thoughts been on Marcel? And would you play eight Nuri moving forward? You said cross his eyes. I mean, you mean dot his eyes, cross his T's. I know. No, well, you can cross your eyes like that, can't you? Oh, like, Isn't that sorry. like trouble the, company. The <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's a it's a weird it's a weird one for me. I think he's done done a job. He hasn't been outstanding, but at the same time, bar yes, uh, like this weekend's game, he hasn't been dreadful. Um, but yeah, that Watford game, especially him and Sace got exposed at times, and he was set pieces against Watford. He was all over Josh King, similarly to how he was against against Tony on on Saturday. So. Um, I, I I remember you know um, we have we haven't spoke about the Brentford game yet but he, he does it a lot and he was doing it all against Watford, um but it's just something if if we're gonna stick with this three four three, I wanna I wanna see Aiton Nori mm. play because he was good against Forest and I know it's Forest but I wanna see him play now in a more attacking system. He played quite a bit in pre season as like a left midfielder so a little bit further up as well, um and I wanna see him get given a go and I think. With the, like a clean slate now after Saturday's game, Bruno can rotate the team for Wednesday 
with every place up for grabs for Sunday's game against Southampton. So whoever performs well on Wednesday has got a massive shout of starting as well on Sunday. Mm. So oh, I think oh, I think oh. that that place is definitely up for grabs. That um, you, you could argue every every place more or less. Obviously the midfield areas you like, but the whole of that back five. I think Samedo, although he's got his doubters, he's fairly safe. But the rest of that, the rest of the five, I think it's up for grabs. Yeah, he, I know he did have a good game against Forest, but Forest were were gash as as you would say. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, what's what's your thoughts been on on, on Marcel before we we well we come on to the Brentford game? We'll talk about it. He's, he's still he tackle a little bit further. But are you, have you been yeah. waxing lyrical about him as as many fans have on Twitter? Um, I think he's been solid. Uh, I, th- I think obviously the crossing was the main issue. He, his mm. delivery is so poor. He, he, just, he just couldn't hit any. He couldn't find anyone really. Um, I've always been a. I was a big fan of Aiton Ori last season. So I'll, I'll be honest. I'm a bit disappointed to have only seen him play against Forest. I mean, you know, I think he's he come on as a substitute. I think he has at some point. Oh, I'm not yeah. sure. You know, yeah. yeah. So it, for me, it's a bit of a strange one. Um, maybe. Large doesn't feel like you know he's he's good enough defensively to to you know start, which I guess is a fair criticism. Um, but going forward, he's he's miles better. So I, I don't know. It's a weird one. Um, I personally would switch it up. I, I just Marcel. I don't know what it is. Every time he gets on the ball, even when I was watching us against Celta Vigo, and every time he gets on the ball, I just feel nervous for some reason. Like even though he could do nothing wrong. Um, yeah. it, it, it just doesn't fill me with confidence. But it, it, to be honest, it's the same with any of that back three um, or back five, I guess you could say. But um, yeah, it's a strange one. I, I, I would like to see a Nori start against Spurs, to be honest. Get him, give him a bit more game time. I think the problem is that like, the centre centre halves aren't good enough to then go and play, especially in a four, go and play an attack-minded wing back. Because I'd... Maybe Bolly if he gets back to previous form or Mosquera, even though we haven't seen enough of him. I don't fancy any of them centre offs playing in a back four. And especially without a defensive minded full back. It's just that it just it just wouldn't work, and which is why we needed a centre half in, in the summer. But moving on to Brentford, bloody hell. Oh my word. It's I know it was only two nil and it could have been four. But I just, with, with their antics too thin. I just felt exhausted watching it. It was the longest game of football, the most frustrating. I, I left on 83 because they were going down. And, and because I'm in the North Bank and you have to. But they were going down. Like, Turns all shut at 85 here, didn't you? No, the North Bank took the piece, but Matt's took Plastics. The piece, yeah. Absolute plastics. <laughs> I saw, I saw a post on Dingle's area. It's like, what, why do these people like leave early? Like, Give you season ticket up and oh, shut up. Like, oh, pay me God. money. I can I can go at ten Not minutes if I want. On, mate. Um, but I just felt exhausted. And I left because they were going down every minute. I was like, I can't watch this. Like this is ridiculous. But being to sum up the game, mate. I won't ask you to do it in so many words because no struggle <laughs> with that. But <laughs> yeah, take me five minutes to, uh, to you in my, <laughs> the end of my answer. Sorry. So I'm here now. I'm here now. We'll go. Um, yeah, no, I stayed the whole time. I stayed so late. I met Jolie and Lescott after he's presenting. So I, I was a proper fan. Um, but no, yeah, the, the first half, it was worrying for me because not only did they, I mean, they scored four goals. As you said, they had the ball in the back of that four times and it was an, an unlucky handball. And I didn't see the offside from where I was for that first one because it was down the other end. Um, but the... It's worrying if you say, oh, it's, it's one on the side, but it's now a blueprint, I think, as to how to to tackle a, an unknown Wolves team, which is what's worrying me for the future. As in, every time they came down, we, sorry, came down the left or the right, they brought one of their midfield three over, the wing back and the centre half, and it was just 2v3. We couldn't find anything, and they'd counter with the two up front. It was almost like we were playing a second Premier League season Wolves team. Like the Jimenez Jota felt like the Tony and Buemo, and every time they got the ball, it felt like they were going to do something and they worked well together. And it, it, it was worrying. I am trying to convince myself that it was just, yeah, we were, we were done on the day. The players, there was a lot of players that dropped stinkers. But as I say, the other part of me is worrying that that is the blueprint. We hadn't come up against a five at the back. This is the first time and it it, it did us. It, it just completely nullified us. Tony, um, I'm sure we'll come on to, but insert any name here, Tammy Abraham, Antonio, we said Chris Wood before, any striker like that gets joy against us and there's got to be a way, whether it's starting with a four and, and leaving Cody out, 
there's got to be a way of counteracting that. But then you can't just pick on Cody. He did Kilman for the second goal. I think he did Sace a few times. So what the answers are, uh, there's people paid more than me to um sign a centre back. Out, but no, yeah, that's my my overall <laughs> sign a centre back. That would help, I imagine. Tom Please. would have signed some players, Claxon. <laughs> Sides of players. Oh, mate. It's just, it brings back all the, it, that game brought back all the deadline day stuff for me. It was just horrendous. Um, that, that, yeah, probably I'm after that. Twister after, 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 after that game, mate. Oh, my God. Like, oh, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was very dire. reactive. Like, we, we, we were, were very reactive, fan base, we so. were absolutely dreadful. Um, and it was like, this is Fosman's fault, sat the ball, Jeff Shee, need to walk. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I just, <laughs> that's how I felt, Dave. I just yeah. looked at the app and went, "Yeah, not tonight, not tonight." Uh, no, I, I, I didn't bother. I just, I, I don't know. You were one of them, I, mate. I was, I was just looking. At you, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, to be to be fair, I, I, I said that we this. I, I think what I said was a, was a fair comment, which was that this shows that we we should have signed a centre back. I mean, there's no good. It's no good saying it now because the window's shut. Um, but it, I think that it, it, it's a, it was a fair critique of the game. It's what happened, really. We got bullied. It's happened so many times. Um, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I knew it was going to be a tough game. I was concerned for this one because I think the, the newly promoted team tag is a bit of a false image sometimes. Um, I think Brentford are a very decent team. Our midfield two has always, even under Nuno, struggled against the midfield three. You've got uh, Vitaly Janelt, who is a, a really proficient centre midfielder, a call, a creating shot, creating chances. I think he creates like he's created like nine or something. Um, their XGA is like second in the league. So they've got the second best defence in the league for conceding chances. So they, it was always going to be the case that if they took the lead or if they got a foothold in the game, it was always going to be so, so difficult. They're really well coached. Um, and I, this that's why I put them, you know, in our, you know, I think it was our pre season podcast challenge pushing for the top 10. So they've got a solid base to build off. They've got an experienced defence, got energetic midfield. And that showed on the day, really. They just completely outran us. Physical battle was just unmatched. I mean, they just oh, beat us in everything. Well, Tom, but it, with the way they were going down, well, next week they ain't going to have a fucking squad, I don't think, mate, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, though, if we were 2 0 down and doing it, we'd, 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 no, we'd be the, the thing is, though, they, I mean? it, we, they were doing it. They were time wasting when they were celebrating as well. The first goal, I, I, it took them how long? That's the thing, though, I think. We can't be annoyed at them time wasting because we shouldn't have been in the position that we were two 0 down anyway. You it know, we, we, that, should, no, it was the we shouldn't as well, find ourselves the in these positions. Yeah, but they, they did right. it from yeah. the thirtieth, thirty fifth minute or whatever. The referee, every time the ball went out or their yeah. player went down, would blow his whistle and then turn around away from the ball for like another then, twenty seconds and wouldn't watch what was going on either. So the ref was so out of the game. And right. I, I, whenever whenever you bring the officials up, people always say, "Why are you using the ref as an excuse?" But genuinely, it was they were dire. Not just him, the linesmen, both sides were dreadful as well. But he had no control or authority on the game whatsoever. How David Royer didn't get a booking is beyond me. How Aya or Janssen didn't get a booking is absolutely beyond me. Ponish Jansen went down three or four times and had to get taken on the sides of the pitch three or four times. Yeah, that, that, on, that, that you know one in the, towards, And then he, he chucked his water bottle game, at Marcel uh, in the second half as well. But guess what? The referee, he's got his back to the game. He didn't even what he didn't know what's going on. It, it was so bad. And then the problem, yeah, yeah. when when have you, know you ever seen well, a like, goalkeeper? Have to change his gloves in the middle of a game as well, it was and take three and three he's minutes to do so. On the halfway line. Oh my word! Yeah, and why is he the what? He shouldn't. If he's got to change him, someone else take the free kick. But as you're saying, Dave, I don't blame any of that on Brentford because it's all down to the rep. You book him. He had no control. It. Yeah, if if it was us, if we were up one nil against the fan cast in that game, and the ref wasn't booking <laughs> us for changing boots before free kicks, we'd go right. Let's try and push this. Further, do you know yeah, what I mean? You, they were yeah. having a laugh with it. They were, they no, were they doing were like, the ref was, the ref was shocking too. Like, right, I'm going to change my gloves. Yeah. Let's see if that one works. They were doing it in the first half, like, and you could see what they were doing. Like, if you've ever watched a game of football before for longer than a year, you know that <laughs> they're just trying to manage the game out from the first goal. And he let them get away with it and he set a precedent. And I've, I've, it was like the battle of the Somme. How many were going down? It was it was ridiculous. Um, however, I don't blame him for it. I wish we did it more often. 
But uh, that Bruno was, said oh, that as well. Bruno said we need to be less of a nice team. Um, and we're still having the same problems where we're not aggressive enough um, in the challenge. We, we, you know, we don't um, we don't use the the quote unquote dark arts often enough. We, we're too nice. We're too, you know kicking the ball out for opposition teams too often when when a player goes down. Do just don't do, just just don't do it. Just leave them. Like the one where Pontus Janssen went down, I think it was Huang who challenged for the ball. Nowhere near Janssen. Uh, in the penalty area, he just goes down and stays down. For and the ref stops the game. Minute, yeah, he stopped you know, the game. The game the didn't even so touch excited, him. Didn't he? Yeah, that was didn't even t- the fact <laughs> that, that they even. Ch- I was, I was. Uh, they, they actually checked that on VAR. What a waste of time! I mean, seriously, what did they think they were going to see? Uh, I did absolute boggles my eyes. Stuart Atwell on VAR as well. He can go do one. He's useless as well. He's, he's pathetic. They're, they're all pathetic. I mean, down in England, I, I've, I've seen him ref a few games. I think he's one of the more younger refs. I don't know what the hell they're teaching him. I mean, seriously, it's, it's a true. Yeah, fair than he. He's only been in the Premier a little bit. Yeah, but he had an absolute skin when he can, came up last year. You can tell he's yeah. EFL. You can tell he's EFL. EFL refs are absolutely terrible. You, yeah. pre- they are some of the worst you know, officials I've ever seen. He, wasn't he the one, I think, on one of his first games in the Prem, when it leads Burnley, when the guy scored from outside the box and he blew the whistle as the guy shot it and it went in and he blew for a foul before it had gone in the, and it was the wrong decision and basically it's just chalked. Chalk. I think it was, Le- I'm sure it was Leeds Burnley. But yeah, but it, it was him. But like, yeah, it's just, it was just shocking. But... But mm. the fact that Brentford, though, got they were down for 10 men for how long? Like 20 minutes, half an hour, and we still couldn't break them down. That's and the they, thing. Were st- That's the thing. they were still attacking us as well, to be fair. Mm. But I was looking at the, I kept looking at the uh, the timer on the screen, and I was like, looking, I was there, 60 minutes. I was like, all right, if we get one in the next five minutes, we can go at them for another 25 minutes, half an hour. It's just going on and on. I was like, 70 minutes, right? If we can get one in the next five minutes. And it just went down, and I just thought, and, th- and then. Even uh, Pontus Janssen, like the South Bank, were giving it him and he was trying to give it back and stuff like that. And it's just like, nah. Mm. So he, they, Thomas Frank, he, he does play gash football, I'll tell you that. There you go. I, th- I, I thought they looked decent. The, fo- t- no, the quality of football is good, but the way they did it just wound me up. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I wish we did that though. We need, like, I just wish I would hate it though. I, I know it's all more. fun. I would absolutely hate it if we played like that. I get it to a degree. Oh, no. But I couldn't watch my team do that. It would piss me off. That would. I, 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 I wouldn't mind if it was against like Man City or like United away from home. But if you're doing it, say if you're doing it at home to like Norwich, Watford, I'd be like, what are you, what are you doing here, lads? But you know what? That wasn't the reason why we lost the game. The reason why we lost no, the we're game because we're absolutely zero dreadful. shots on target, man. What's you that talk about, about being too nice. Poor. So the poor. second the second goal sums it up for me. Kilman. He's been he's been flavouring him up. He's done all right. You've got to put him in the I, fucking stand. I, I, I don't know about that because he's got the he's got the ball there though. He's got the ball yeah, and he's got an unfortunate back. Oh, if you he tries, at, no, he's tried to be clever with it and catch it when, in between when the, his legs, though, not he? When when the cross comes out. in, who, who the defending when the cross comes in is even yeah. worse because you've got players that are running off their markers, are running off the players they're marking for no reason. I thought, I can't. Who, who was marking him? Bamo? Was it Marcel or Saïs? Meant to be Saïs at the back. He was. He just he was run, completely he just ran own, off him. He just ran. Yeah. He just he ran forward for no reason. Just stay on him. I I, I just don't understand. Yeah. It's exactly the same as last season. Crosses again. We couldn't defend <laughs> driven crosses. We couldn't defend floated crosses. We couldn't defend whipped crosses. It's just like what what have we learned? I just, I just it's do this does my head in that we're still making the same mistakes under a different manager as well. Mm. It Wait, just goes to show. Kilman thinks he's Maldini there trying to like collect the ball and dribble away with it. Like just just get, get rid of it because if, because you end up if you end up in a foot race with Tony, I'm sorry, fella, but you're not going to win it. And then obviously yeah, he's, he's he's very clunky, isn't he? Sometimes yeah. he's, I know he's the, I know the, the club were worried about his agility anyway about a year ago. Um, I read that in an article by Tim Spears. Like he's coming and he's done all right, but he ain't, he ain't the answer. He never was. He's no. done well. Uh. He's done well this season. He, he, but he's probably the best out of the, out the three on on the pitch. I think it's not so much. Cody's Cody's role isn't the same as Sace and Kilman. And what is his role then? That's well, the question, it, isn't it? What is he? Well, we don't need us. We don't need a sweeper anymore. Like we don't need a sweeper. So his his position is null and void. Jose Sarr comes out of his box, uh, comes out of off his goal line quite a lot, collects the ball, plays quick passes. You know we don't use the diagonals anymore. Um, 
the the back three limits us going forward. It limits us in midfield because we have to play the two. I don't think it does it, limit us no with positives. how well we attack. The, the, the numbers that we created the first four games have been like ridiculous. Like we've never seen. But I don't think it limits us in the way we play it. But you do have to have better defenders to play it. It was that high line, yeah. and you've got three championship standard defenders there. And mm. Ivan Tony was. Really good. I know Finn mentioned those strikers earlier. It did remind me. I remember when Tammy Abraham played for C yeah. Bristol City. Exactly yeah, the same. Like he was, he was, he was, was, he was like, I was yeah. very, very impressed with uh, Tony. I thought he was excellent. He's, I was looking at... Um, I couldn't sleep last night. So, of course, as, as you do when you can't sleep, you go and look at who's won the most aerial duels in the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> He's up there, isn't he? He, he beat awesome. Ben White. Ben's behind Benteke. He um, beat Ben White all, like, like yeah. against uh, Arsenal, didn't he? Big yeah. bloke anyway, isn't he? But then you've got, I think he's won 29 aerial duels. And then you look at Az and Adama's Troy always probably highest. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was going to say. Yeah, he, he wins every single Sace, one. Sace and Cody with 10. Well, which, as yeah. centre half, I mean... Kilman, I, th I, would, I have to say, though, that's where Kilman really definite, uh, definitely lacks. For someone so tall, his heading is absolutely atrocious. Mate, none of them jump. You couldn't get a Rizzo yeah. under Cody's feet at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's the uh, there's the the Cooper slam. I was say, <laughs> with, uh, coming in again. Wallop. Adama, Adama yesterday especially. I think it, you just you just knew he wasn't having luck. Some of those 50-50 duels, like normally where he could get his yeah. he backs into a defender and, and sort of rolls off. He, even though those weren't coming off yesterday, and I just knew when he was having a bad game. Even my, see, even my dog hated it. Uh, it. When he's having a bad game, we we aren't going to have a good game. Uh, so yeah, that summed up the the game. And Marcel as well, flipping. Rugby tackling Tony to the ground, like I alluded to earlier. That was just absolutely oh, stupid. Man. Especially when the referee pulled him up on it before the corner was taken. Mm. What's the referee going to do? Just watch you for the rest of the corner. And then Tony goes down. The thing is, I, I said it on, on the review, if a player goes down like that, look, there's always pulling in, you know, yeah, pulling and pushing in the box. If a player goes down, it's going to get given every week. So I'm not yeah. saying it wasn't a penalty because I think it was, but it is just like you basic play for it, stuff. Don't you? Yeah, it's just you, basic you stuff to it. avoid. Yeah. yeah, I think I think Finn's back with us now. Are you are your internet all right now, Finn? Yeah, I think so. How how was I all right there? <laughs> Two three seconds. How far? I off? thought we were on another delay. Then I was oh man, oh. I feel sorry for him at this point. Did you did you hear most? Did you hear most of that? That absolute shellacking about the performance. <laughs> Yeah, there's about 30, 30 seconds, about a minute where I could, didn't have a clue what was going on. So I, I left you in the so capable right. hands. Sykes, Sykes was um, on that for 45 <laughs> minutes yesterday, so I won't worry. 90. <laughs> oh, you do. You play, you and I took him off, didn't you? Yeah, I took uh, him off. Yeah. Go on, so credit, credit where it's due, mate. It wasn't the full game. Um, Finn, what, 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 do you do with that, what do you do with that back five? Back, do you move it to a back four? And if you do, who who, who do you play? Do you, does Bolly come into the team? Does Mascara come into the team? Do you drop Cody? Cody is a right sided centre half for me. He's just it's suicidal. Yeah, Bolly comes in regardless. I think there doesn't he in any system. I think it was one of the two, or definitely one of the three. Um, as you say, last season it's similar with Pedent. So I thought maybe both of them hadn't quite shook off injuries or were rushed back. I mean, we saw with. Neto and Johnny, they had a tendency to rush them back last season. So I am confident there's still that old Bolly, just like there's that old Pedence as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to him coming back. I think that'll change things, can play on both sides as well. But in a two, because we haven't seen it that often, there's nothing in my head where I go, well, that's the obvious two that I'd go for. I think Bolly would be one of the two. And then because he can play on either side, it's not like, well, then you're, you're limited. Bolly and Kilman, does that fill you with? It wouldn't be Bolly and Sace. Bolly and Cody, if the captain's got to play like Lars is doing at the moment. Nish. I don't know, but I think yeah, Bolly's got to be in there regardless for me. I'd like to see a two, like as in a four against Spurs. Uh, Bolly and Mascara haven't had a kick, have they yet? So maybe them two together, that could be exciting to see. Um But no, yeah, I'd I think Bolly plus one or <laughs> Bolly plus two is a situation that we're in. Um and one of those would have been Botman, as you say, Tom, but we didn't sign any players. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, it's it's in interesting to know. I know you mentioned uh, playing the captain. Um, interesting. I, I know it doesn't mean much, but post match interviews, Nevers has done a lot this season. Pretty much after every game, he's come out and said, you know, at least something to the website or, or the YouTube channel. Um, and he, you know, and 
But um, I, I love Cody to bits as a bloke. Yeah, he's he's so you know he, he's he's class. Um, but I think it's strange when you've got your vice captain coming out pretty much after every game and doing an interview, and then we haven't really heard much from Cody. I don't know whether that's just the the fact that I'm not reading it properly or I've missed something. Um, but I don't know. It just seems like Nevers has really sort of taken a, a hold on this team um, this season. He just he looks to be. Um, being more of, of that leader figure. Um, definitely. I don't know. He's, it's, more, it's he's, definitely more, he's definitely more front and centre than he than he has been. Mm. Uh, even towards mm. the end of last season, he was. and like, Even he had a shit game on the weekend. Uh, yeah. look, you know it's bad when he, he receives a ball on the edge of the box and he turns around and he gives the ball away and then nearly score. But the thing that concerns concerned me a little bit is Brentford pressed us and that's the blueprint because our centre-halves and wing backs absolutely shit themselves how many times did you see say trying to whip a ball into the channel take too many touches and it ricochet out for a throw in it's got to be quicker you've got to move the ball quicker and you've got it you've got you've got to you have you have to be better but is that is that a technical problem is it just not good enough to they're combat not that? enough yeah they're not and, enough. they're all yeah. like stick they're all they're all like statues and it's like having three no offense but it's like having three danny Bats at the back, you know. I remember when Danny Bats played, solid defender, but so slow on the turn, not really great on the ball, um, not very agile. You know, I mean, it's yeah, it's it, it's it is concerning that five games in, uh, there's been you know a, a blueprint to sort of, of knock us out. But then, to be honest, we said previous things last in previous seasons where, or we, you know, when when um, Cardiff beat us in our first season back in the Prem. Um, and people are, oh, that you know, the blueprint we've been found out. But we, we came mm-hmm. back after that and, and, you know, we got better. So, yeah. mm-hmm. for, for me, it's not a concern. I think Brentford are a very, very decent side. They're a better side than people give, give them credit for. Um, and I, I don't think it's crisis point. I mean, we've had worse starts to the season. I, I think Southampton, though, the problem is now is that the because there hasn't been... Because everything surrounding Bruno's appointment, the controversial decision to sack Nuno. Yeah. I saw someone say he hasn't got a connection with the fans. I was like, well, do you want him to like, come over your house and cook your breakfast? Like, <laughs> what, what, do you want, what do you want him to He's been here about two months. Like, egg egg it's custards. Not, egg I custards for protection. Yeah, come on. Come on, Bruno. ridiculous. <laughs> get it, get I, it. I, I'm worried that if, if we don't get a result, Southampton... It's going to keep getting the pressure is just going to keep getting worse and worse. And the fact that we've only scored one goal with one of our players in five games, no matter how you put it, I think is 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 maybe a concern. But then before Brentford game, we were banging on about you know we've lost three, but we played so well. But now all of a sudden the narratives changed, so mm. you can kind of see both sides of it. But I, I don't think it's anything to be worried about. To be no honest. player in a starting in our starting 11s have scored a goal, have they? Yet I saw that someone say that the other day. Yeah, That's true. Scary. Yeah, mm. yeah. Nah, I think that, it's it's just it's just reactionary though, man. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like like you lot were saying on on Twitter. I I I, I was on it. I dropped a couple of Neil Warnock videos, and that was it. I didn't look at Twitter <laughs> the rest of the evening. Too, but but like, I just didn't on the YouTube comments, we, I normally te- I tend to reply to quite a few, and even yesterday, I was scrolling through them. Or things have got to change now. Uh, relegation. I was like, what? I was like, after we be yeah. what? After we be what for? People are talking about us going for the top seven, getting into Europe again, and then yeah, one no, defeat. It's, you know, yeah. it's it's just like you know, with five games in, like. It's, it's mad. I think Absolutely I think the, like, the the Dingles A we like on Facebook, the the, the proper like Nuno. Our slickers, <laughs> they're just they're, they're kind of it's like well, we told you so. We told you so. We told you so. Told you so. That's pathetic. I saw though, one. Per- pathetic. I saw one person say, um, "I've seen nothing. Um, I've seen nothing from this season to say that Bruno is a better manager than Nuno. Bruno's not the manager for me. Nuno wouldn't have had this bad a start." I'm sorry, but if you'd have watched last he season, has. Mate, I, I, I was, he has I was had a bit of a start. You need to say, yeah, well, yeah, that for one. But Nuno, the two years that we got seventh place, like it took us how long to, to get going, you know what I mean? But you just have to look at what the players are saying about Bruno and about yeah, what 100%. Nuno was up to. The amount of people, there's been at least three or four people, players that have come out and basically said that the club needed a change. Even us as fans weren't sure, like, oh, what's gone on? Yeah. Cody said it, Kilman said it. Um, 
Some Marcel said it. Well. Say said Nevis, it. I think. Nevis has alluded yep. it as well. You know, and I mean, said like, yeah, we all think it was time for a change, and they all they all enjoy the style of football. So you know what, I, I pretty much back and support those players that work with him every single day and talk to him every single day. It's, it's a it's a little blip, man. Like you know, and when we win, if we if we win again next week, and if we beat Spurs in the cup on Wednesday, I'm sure on Wednesday evening we'll be talking about winning the Carabao Cup, and then on Sunday afternoon we'll be talking about getting back into the Europa League again. It's just bounce. It fucks me off, man. It's just it's just so it's so and every like every game. I forgot the season ends in September, the end of September, because like, it's like, after every game, it's like. There's either extreme highs or the, oh, you can hear some dogs outside. They, they, they agree, mate. They know. <laughs> that's, that's it's, Twitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's so dingle day. We outside your house. It's either extreme highs <laughs> or extreme lows. Or are we going to yeah. piss the fucking league? Or that's it. We're going to get the Barty brothers back in there. They'll do a better job. You know, because we haven't drawn a game. No one. There's no, there's no oh, middle it's ground just, yet. Oh, just, just, yeah. chill, just chill out and like. Just get behind it for the time being. Make it. Make your judgment mm. after a few months. And if you're still like. Still aren't, aren't, aren't winning games, and we're still flirting around the relegation places. Then maybe have a look and criticise, and maybe we look at a, a change or we find a, a, look, a solution. Look at uh, oh, oh, oh. please don't. He said look at he, the, he said that in the Spurs interview as well. I burst no. out laughing. I was just like, oh it's god. Look at the look at the first season. We finished seventh in the league. Right, we lost mm. to Huddersfield twice. We lost to Watford at home. Remember that was a, a shocking game. Like there were lots of yeah. games like this weekend just gone. Loads of them, and it's just one of them that just stings because one we knew we could do better. Like Tom said, there were for some reason there were a lot of people that f- thought we were just going to rock up and score four or five goals, uh, including always Wolves on Twitter. Um, and you know what else? Yeah, you know, there were loads. There's been loads of games like it's just typical Wolves because then we'll. You know, probably go over in, in you know December, which is meant to be our tricky patch. We'll probably end up beating Liverpool, City, and all that. Mm. So it's just typical I, I, walls. So it's got to relax. We, our fans we, are giving it giving it the, the big bollocks. So like, considering we got three points on the board from four games. Oh mate, it's ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, we said before the start of the season, most of us predicted twelfth, thirteenth. These results are going to happen if you finish twelfth, thirteenth. Like, none of us have ever said that we're going to finish top six. Like, if. We, uh, I, I was expecting a tough game, and we got a tough game. So for me, it wasn't it wasn't a surprise. It was just disappointing how how the players reacted, really. But it, it I don't got, I don't think it's a concern. Also. I thought we got it, battered. I thought we, we weren't even at the races. It could it it, happens. It, it could have been four 0 down within thirty five minutes to a newly promoted side. For me, that's a little bit concerning. But Finn, did you enjoy the two two six formation? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, when I saw who was it that came at the first sub? <laughs> that was terrible. And it wasn't Trincao that came off or something. Was it they brought off Marcel? No, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. the second sub then. The one, it's like, it's like you let your like, missus pick your team on football manager yeah. for you. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and literally, yeah, that last, what were you saying, Dave, in, in the cup final when you got. Oh, I was there. It's like me on an FA Cup Cup final, 1 0 down on the FM, just dragging all my players up the pitch. <laughs> But you saw, I watched Trincao because it was like, right, so he's going to left and he's going, me, me, left back. And he like trudges down back to left wing back. And then by the end, yeah, just two centre halves, two centre mids and vibes. Um, I don't know what Pedence, ro- what again. role Pedence had. He was just there. Was just just stood in the that's middle. the thing. It's like too, 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 too many chefs spoil the broth, isn't it? You can't have six have attack. They'll just get in each yeah. other's way. Um, yeah, You've got too many similar Don, players there. I brought Den Donker on light run from the middle. I, yeah, you know well. what? I wouldn't even be adverse with playing a four-three-three with them three in the middle, especially against someone um, with, like Brentford. Who they, they, well, you get Neves further up the pitch. Around, yeah. Donk almost in that middle. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah, I think curious case, isn't it? I saw Donk at Sainsbury's today. Did you? Yeah. Say hello. Uh, like, as I was walking, he walked out. You know, when you just look at someone, it's like, oh, shit. Like, he's, yeah. he's, well, he's not pen. playing at the moment. He asked for a selfie. Bruno, said, Bruno Leander, doesn't really. I said, Leander, not now. It's my day off. <laughs> day off. Day off. Yeah. No, I said, Leander, it's my day off, son. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my he god, you're day the party. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. you know, Finn Morris, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch his vlogs. <laughs> oh, I think I think we've talked enough about Brentford. We knew we were shit. We need to bounce back. Tom reckons we should sign some players. <laughs> and water is wet. Um, there you go. Spurs on Wednesday. Woohoo! The Carabao Cup, the return of the Messiah, the Saviour, the second coming, <laughs> Ian Cathro. 
<laughs> I, knew Matt that was setup, I knew there was a setup there. There was a setup there. I, could, I knew that Nuno Ian was coming Catherine. out of your mouth after that. <laughs> Cathro is gash. <laughs> Watch him come on, score that trick. We've got Antonio <laughs> Diaz now. Let's go. <laughs> Ian. Oh, God. Oh, Finn. What happens at the Spurs game? What? Who do you play? What formation do you play? And uh, will you boo Nuno? <laughs> of course not, mate. Never, never. No, um, I think the illusion already with Spurs fans is going with him. I listened to the Athletics just out of pure like oh, he did the know, same spitefulness the, in the, the week. From the, the last word yeah, on Spurs. Yeah, they yeah, put that the preview same, out, didn't they? And it was like this yeah. is a worrying thing of what Nuno Ball could become. I thought well, I'll have a listen to that to cheer myself up. It was um, bad. It was yeah, not really that I wanted bad, to do wasn't bad. It? As I say, like I, I remember the podcast we were doing with us four, and you wanted him, and I remember being like, no, never should have never done it. The more you say, as you hear the players say that they think it was the right thing, I, I'm inclined to agree. And I don't want him to do badly at Spurs. I would have liked him to go abroad, oh, but dear. yeah, it, as you say, that yeah. podcast they were saying they were they were really really worried, and I think with the amount of games they've got, like. It's Sunday, Tuesday, Sunday, Tuesday. I don't think, well, he never did, even when we weren't in Europe, did he, Nuno, prioritise the Carabao Cup? So I'm expecting to see a second team from harsh, them. Though. Yeah, and if he doesn't as well, like what he did with us with the Southampton game last season and then goes for it with Spurs, that'll be really annoying. Um, because I saw him today as well. Even my sister, it's the first time she'd seen a Spurs game today. And she went, is that Nuno? Can you see how trim he looked? Like the beard's been trimmed and the, the Hugo mm. Boss jacket, not the flipping Adidas raincoat. Yeah, um, he looked like the ring so, road tramp last season. <laughs> <laughs> so it is annoying to see, but yeah, it should be a second team for them. And I'm I'm more excited to see some of our second team players in a way. Like I want to see if Silver and Huang magically like play well together, or I want to see Pedence, as I say, and and Bolly Mosquera, Eight Nori. I've still got him on my FPL bench, praying that he's going to start starting soon <laughs> because I've got faith. So I want to see these players have a go. Um, so I'm, I want it to be second team, but that's not a bad thing, if you know what I mean. I want those players that have been on the fringes, then Donkers, Eight Norris, Pudences mm. to to get a go. And if it's a second string Spurs team, there's no reason why we can't have have a bit of fun at least. I don't think. Dave, what what formation are, are you playing? I, I feel I feel like our fans are, are desperate to shoe on a player into a number ten role. Mm. I, I think yeah. we should play with a second striker, because someone just a tiny little bit off Silver or Jimenez. I don't think we need a number ten. Um, but what do you reckon? Well, I, I put my predicted lineup on Twitter earlier and, and stuck it as a 3 4 3, but somebody replied saying he didn't think we'd ever see us play 3 4 3 again, like, or, or at least short term. He thinks we're going to swap to four at the back again for the foreseeable. Uh, but I think he'll stick with a 3 4 3. Um, I think my, my lineup would be Rudy in goal. Uh, it's probably going to be Cody in the middle of the back three with Mascara and Bolly either side. Ain't Nori and Mar- uh, Ain't Nori, uh, Keanu Hoover, probably Neves and Dendonka, uh, and then Huang, Pedence and Fabio up top. I think that would be mm. that would be the team. I reckon. Uh, but if he goes four at the back, I reckon he'd swap Cody for Adama or Trincao because I don't know Trincao started against. Uh, I don't, uh, think, I don't Forrest, think I don't think Adama can play at the back, mate. No, no, like in, in a more attacking know, formation. I but uh, yeah, like <laughs> he's like, you know, teasing you. I don't know. Oh, um, you Nuno, right Nuno notoriously <laughs> plays a second string side than he in the Carabao Cup. So I am fair, you know, I'd go into this with a bit of confidence. And our second string team is still strong. It's still a very strong team. Um, so I'm, I'm confident that we can go into this game and uh, hopefully go through to the next round. Hopefully. I think the opportunity is there to get it. I mean, it, it gives it gives like I, I don't know we've said it before. Um, it gives the, the the fringe players or the fringe the players who haven't really got a look in this season a chance to really show something for Sunday because yeah. say if then Donker comes in plays really well, um, same if Mascara comes in plays really well and with Eight Nuri for me they play on Sunday they, they play on it, Sunday because it, I didn't see enough I haven't seen enough from the Brentford and the Watford game to say Martinho has to start, Marcel has to start, Sace has to start. You know, I think there's there's players up for grabs. I dare I say, even Jimenez. If Tom Fabio was, Silva bags mm. two or three on Wednesday, not saying he will, but if he bags a couple of goals, do you start him on Sunday? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I think he's he looks really good against Forest, albeit uh, a very, very poor Forest side. But, you know, he's... what. I, and the question was posed on Twitter and again... 
it's not the best, you know, place, I guess. But I think it was a fair question, which is that what does Fabio Silva not offer that Jimenez is, or what does Jimenez offer at the moment that him Fabio doesn't? Um, and uh, you know, I, I think it's a it's a fair question, but I also think that people are writing him off far too quickly. Um, you know, we're only five games in; he's been out for a year. So it's a bad injury as well. Um, that Rabona didn't help him as well. To be fair, if he hadn't done that, I don't think people would have been that half as asked. Um, but yeah, no, I I, I, I agree with uh, Finn and, and Dave. To be honest, although uh, second string for us is essentially just our first team with maybe three or four players yeah. changed. Is that um, because we need more players? You reckon? Um, no, I think we'll be sound. We got we got sixty <laughs> players. Don't forget, we got sixty players in the squad with the under twenty threes, the under eighteens, and yeah. And to be them. fair, that they have got a, a, a comprehensive scouting network of five thousand players. Yet couldn't manage to sign one on <laughs> in the last window. Yeah. Uh, but Den Donk is a weird one, isn't he? He's barely seen like, any action at all. I don't yeah. think he's not kicked the ball either. No, he's he, strange. Really, really strange. <laughs> um, I, I was to be honest. I was. I'm very disappointed. I thought, you know, my 15 goal prediction was <laughs> somewhat got really got the games, mate. First, mate. But he's yeah. he won't even get 15 games at this point. I mean, it's 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 pretty bad, isn't it? Um, Tom's yeah, gonna start I, counting a penalty in the penalty shootout against Spurs on Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're off the mark. Yeah. I'm actually. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm, I'm I'm actually going down to the. I'm going down to the game. Is it down or up? Down. Yeah. Down. down. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing domestic competitive Bruno Ball for the first time. Tom's going to be um, counting Den Donka goals up Pele does when he kicks yeah. it up. Kicks oh, a, <laughs> kicks I'll be kept for a chair at a family. Oh, they're yeah. going to put a pre-match training video on where Dong scores a tap in, and Tom's going to be like, "There's the first." Oh, there you go. I'll put something else, mate. I'll probably I'll probably count completed passes at this point. Yeah. I mean, he's just doing absolutely nothing for him to be honest. Um. I'll, I'll be interested to see Bruno Shaw down this season. I can't believe I'm saying that, but Christ, scraping the he's, he's coming. He's coming back from injury. Hey, listen, I think he could be a really solid player. I've been banging the drum for a All while right. now, and he scored that goal against Reading and then got injured. So we need to stop really? with these edgy little uh, predictions. Yeah, just... we're embarrassing <laughs> yeah. ourselves. No, yeah, no, no Morgan Gibbs, just, the, I said Morgan Gibbs is going to be the England team. No, gen, yeah. gen, genuinely, I think Jordan could be a decent player. He's not. He's not going to pull up any trees, I don't think. But I, I do. I, I, I don't see any reason why to, to not uh, to write him off. You know, he's, he's barely played for us under Bruno. I think he can get the best out of him. Um, a Gibbs White, fair play to him as well. By the way, two goals, two assists already for him. I, he's smashing it. I'm really uh, happy for him to be honest. Um, I just hope we don't recall him. I know it sounds stupid, but I hope we don't because we, when we recalled him last last season, I think it, it really did stunt his growth, um, albeit under, under a different coach. But I'd, I'd just like to see him get a full season of like first team football under his belt. Um, mm, no, but, but yeah, I, I I I agree, mate. He's done. He's doing really well at Sheffield United. Get some uh, minutes under his belt. I would come back and flog him or integrate him into the first team. Chaps, first it's team. It, yeah, it's time for questions. We've we've flown through that. To be fair, that's gone very quickly. Um, and we're going to go to Twitter first. I've not looked at the Instagram question, so we'll go with the Twitter one. It's going to be good. Talk, talk amongst yourselves. Finn, how much longer are you giving Raul? And that's a question from Ooh. Joey. Oh, he's, he's banging that drum, isn't he? <laughs> um, the thing that I've still... <laughs> these past few months, yeah. Um, I'd say, <laughs> right, the thing that's, the thing oh, that's that. worried me... <laughs> is, is, um, for Finn. <laughs> the thing that's worried me was that last 10 minutes when he missed that header and threw the headband off because that clearly shows in his head that he's saying this is affecting me like even if he's thinking it he's visibly showing it to everyone there I'm not the same player at the moment and that that's what's worrying me I give him unless Fabio as you say bags two or three you can't not start him then but for the next five games I think you persevere with him the player that he was if he can get up to that um, that sharpness because you still say as we were saying before Matt he doesn't look sharp too many touches yeah, he sort of can't yeah. get the ball out of his out of his feet properly but you've seen flashes that Watford flick to Semedo if, if Semedo puts that in that's a brilliant assist on the board there's little fine margins he'd have got an assist if Adamas hadn't hit the crossbar and I know because I've put Raul in my FPL team and there's been zero returns but there's been close shaves I, I agree he doesn't look the same player but I think a goal, it's so cliche, but a few flicks that will come off and not end up on his arse, trying Ravonas and all that. So 
I think, yeah, at least 10 games you've got to give him. I think 10, so another five. And then so, if we yeah. don't see a goal then, then you've got to ask a question. It's a, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Because you would you could say it's a big risk to take considering how important the next stretch of games are, considering our mm. opponents on paper. But at the same time, you know, if, if you drop him, he's... He's, he's not going to regain that sharpness. We've got to remember, this guy played like pretty much every game for like two years straight, two, three years straight. No. Yeah, three, well, two and a half years maybe because he got injured in oh, November, year, December. Yeah, yeah. So when you're playing that amount of football, you get in your rhythm, you, you're used to playing every week, getting in the team, you know what to do. When you're out for a year, it's not as easy as snapping your fingers and just being the same player. Um, you know, this guy's been so, so good for us uh, the, the past, you know, first two seasons and even at the start of last season, he had four goals. I think he still ended up like almost joint top scorer. Um, mm. You know, I, I can't write him off. I really can't. Um, but again, Fabio and Huang are knocking on the door, but that that's what you want. You you want the options. You know, last season it was Fabio or William Jose. Now we've got Fabio, a revitalised Fabio and and. and uh, he Chan Wang, so I feel more confident in dropping him. I don't think we're as reliant on him, but I still think there is that reliance there that it, you know obviously would be a concern, really. Yeah, Dave, we've got a question yeah. here. I'll let you answer this one from Matt Beck on uh, Instagram. Is it too early to question Bruno Lage's ability? Clearly, something isn't working. He looks out of his depth. Fuck. You, you want <laughs> You have to answer that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh Is that your God. answer? Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> Out of his depth. Oh, my oh God. God. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Man with I mean, a title with Benfica. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, way too early. Way too early, Matt. Anyone that thinks he should walk or be sacked already needs to probably give up their season ticket. So, if they've yeah. got one. I saw someone uh, compare him to Zenga yesterday. Yeah, I saw that as well, I think. Pathetic, right. shocking. Um, got a question here from H, H, H underscore WWFC. What's your opinions on Sar so far? He's not impressed me, Finn. This is I'd very say that, I, negative, isn't it? No, yeah, I'd say that's fair though. I think yesterday, if he'd have given that one away to Tony, there's a bit of a I, he's made good saves, and I, I could argue either way. I think, but you could say the penalty against Spurs was his fault. Um, there was another. One way you United go, Greenwood, up, yeah, Greenwood, the goal. Um, but it, apart from all those clangers, he's looked good. Um, he I made think a good save yesterday, up. though. He made a good save yeah. when he yeah, through. The distribution was good yesterday as well. Yeah, yeah just th there seems to be one brain fart a game, and if that doesn't lead to a goal, then I think we're going to be all right there because what he adds in in coming out, he's not just staying on his line like he, he was. I think he's an upgrade. You know, the moment. corner before they got the penalty. Yeah. They whipped it in, and he just stood on his line. And Neves like did a really poor header at the near post. I don't get mm. why Saar didn't just come out and claim that, and then it would have just stopped I all think of that. So. The the mistakes that he's made, though, I think Patricio probably would have done though. Like Patricio was never that that shot the green one scored. Patricio was never great at those sorts of saving those sorts of shots. I'll be honest. And the penalty, any goalkeeper no, I don't know comes about up, that one. Greenwood, any one, I think. Yeah, but any near one, post, he should, he near he post, say that. Patricio is crap. At, yeah, yeah, it's it's it, it, yeah. it, it, it's a mistake. But anyway, we need. I don't to think that's an, that's yeah outlandish opinion. Point. Basically, yeah, I think yeah you could argue yeah, yeah, it's Fair enough. It's just a bit negative, isn't it? Not like yeah. you, you know. Have you been impressed with Trinko? Because I have. Um, right, mm. go, moving on to Twitter. Um, Harry Mansell, which idea do we think Matt will be crying out at the end of the season? Oh God, that's awful. I don't know, mate. It's, it's, too, it's too early to say. Um, uh, a question from Shiv, relegated with this football or stay up with Nuno Ball? Dave? <laughs> this, is, this is incredible. Stay, this. Up, stay up, man. I, I'd never want what to get What kind of question is that? Yeah. Stay uh, up, I would. Oh. Yeah. Dave's internet's gone a little bit funny, so I'll come to you, Finn. So um, we got a question from Andy Hipkins, friend of the show. Hope you're doing well, Andy, mate. Um, do Wolves offer Matinho and Marcel a new contract past the end of the season? I saw the rumours of Matinho's one. Mm. I, I don't think he's looked too bad, to be honest. Um, for me, I'd still be Neves and Dendonker in midfield. But at, if he stayed at this standard for another year, what's he got? Is he the end of the season he expires? Yeah, the end of this season. And Marcel, yeah. And how? Yeah. Yeah, Marcel can probably. 
go. He's he's going to get injured at some point anyway. He isn't has he? to go. Um, especially when you've got John, when you've <laughs> got Johnny coming back, you've then got you two, <laughs> got you two yeah. left wing backs. Um, so probably not on Marcel unless there's a drastic change in, I mean, him not rugby tackling players, etc., and learning how to cross at the age of thirty-seven or whatever he is. Um, so probably Matinho for, for another season, but I didn't think I'd be saying that. But I, I wouldn't passionately argue it if he goes to Porto for a swan song at the end of the season. That'd be that'd be fine with me too. Yeah. Um, moving on, should we go to something a little? I bit did more say like Nuno Ball, now? by the way. I said I'd stay it with Nuno Ball was my answer. For yeah, the yeah, yeah. You'd mm, start with Nuno's yeah. balls. Yeah, yeah. That was Finn all that <laughs> season. That was um, silly. Yeah. Go down with Nuno's balls. Ronnie Ronnie <laughs> Twist has asked, "What's your favourite pizza, Tom?" In 30 Ooh. seconds, tell us what your favourite pizza is. Stuffed crust, double pepperoni. Let's go. Ooh. Oh, fair enough. We've got, we got time. Is there any particular brand or... Uh, um, uh, I do really like Domino's, but they're so expensive. Um, yeah, you must be on a right packet, you lad. Pizza Domino's. Express. Yeah. Pizza Express is nice as well. David? I like, uh, Domino's, I have a Texan barbecue. Um, oh, you like barbecue based, don't you? We've argued about this before. No, no, only on that one though. It's not like I go out of my way to get a barbecue base. I'll eat anything, man. Like uh, as long as I ain't got pineapple on, it's sound. I have oh, one from Gri- on. No, I'm not. I'm not no. cheap, Tom. Come on. I'm not um, cheap. Uh, I am that's a cheap. A, chip, pineapple gr- on pizza. Gr- grill it. Grill it. Do a nice pizza as well. I have a. Gr- I have a pizza from Grill it every now and then. I have. Do you like, Grill it really- sponsor this podcast because we mention them like every week. Oh. I'll drop him an email. Is that a local? Uh, is that a local business? It's like a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is good to be fair. Yeah. We, we we went after the charity game. Black cards, grilling yeah. black cards. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, <laughs> Finn. What's your favourite pizza, lad? <sighs> yeah. Um. How long have we got? Because I haven't been called a nonce. Margarita. A while, but... <laughs> no, no. I... <laughs> you lot know this with grilling, and I got called a, a nonce for the same sort of thing. <laughs> I go meat feast. Um. But I meat, don't like any. All the feast. I don't like. <laughs> Sauce, I don't like you know, I'm not like with sauces, I have it without the tomato base. And so, you, what? you, you have, che- you have the cheese on toast, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What put, hang on, so how does that work? You just have cheese, yeah, so you cheese, yeah, and ham, cheese and ham sandwich, isn't it? <laughs> oh. it's, well, it's do you know what? Bread. Each to their own, each to their own, bread, oh, cheese, and meat. And I love the Asda, the Asda pizzas, um, oh, wow. Domino's, Papa John's, all do a great meat piece, but Asda for like two pounds thirty. Yeah, but the thing is now, like. Yeah, like my sister sometimes pops in and gets one for me, and every time said they just pull a fake. No, like no sauce. No, are you sure? No, you don't even want barbecue, do you? You don't want cream as like. But yeah, it's it's well, it's it's good. I you should like, all try it. But I like the is, is it a, is it a blank uh, a Bianca where it's like a creamy sauce? Yeah, they offer. Like, yeah, like a, yeah, I, I quite like that. I, I, you moan at me for flipping barbecue oh, yeah, pushing the boat out now. Nice, yeah, having Bianca, Jesus, I, I, carbonara I, I, pizza or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> I um, I like pepperoni, pineapple, and jalapenos, and you might think. Ooh, what a, what a, that he sounds needs nice. Go, he, he needs to go on the register. Yeah, However, let me break that it down nice. for you. I know what you're going to say. Uh, tell me, but I know how you're going to describe it. Because I'll I've probably, I've probably, I've probably tell you that every day. I'm just ram it down your throat. <laughs> the, the richness of the pepperoni combining with the sweetness of the pineapple and then the, the little spice. <laughs> it's uh, I knew it. I knew it. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Are we on MasterChef? Yeah, what is this? Yeah. Hey, get Actually, on my Instagram, yes. M. Cooper yeah. writes, you'll see some of me whipping up some unreal things in the kitchen. Just not in the bedroom, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, if you could choose combine one, both. I don't know. A bit of whipped cream for the boys. Um, if you could choose one, sausage or bacon on a, on a sandwich thing. Yeah, I'll, 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 have, I'll have a sarnie, but not the bread. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if it's with bacon and egg, probably. But if it was, I'd probably go sausage on its own. But if it was with an egg, I'd go bacon. Is that allowed? Yeah, yeah I, I think I, I think I'd be the same as well as Finn. Probably you sausage like be- sandwich. You look a best though, don't you, Dave? Oh, I have a best. Oh, they're tremendous. They are. bacon What's egg sausage tomorrow. Oh Come yes, on. bacon Someone. egg mushroom. Bacon egg mushroom. Oh is the no, 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 yeah. no, no. Yeah, no. tell you what, as well. Yeah. Um, WV1 had breakfast on. They had that in the um. In what best? Pots. Well, oh. yeah, basically, yeah, with mushroom as well. Is that? So oh, you don't yeah, know what that would. Yeah. And best on. Best and best. It was a really nice. Yeah, he, was up, he was up front for Wentworth. Sandwich place in Wentf- uh, Wentfield, actually. <laughs> nice place in Wentfield. You're joking, aren't you? <laughs> hey, <laughs> listen, we have got some good stuff. I will tell you that. Do you do you I butter sp- your bread on a sarnie, like a bacon yeah, and yeah, sausage yeah, yeah. sarnie? 
Yeah, yeah. I never used always. to to live with scousers, and they t- they they always toasted the bread slightly and then buttered it. I was like, you you lot need you need. It sacking. was unreal there. Oh yeah, and it's like only only like a scrape of butter. I mean, this is quality content, by the way. Oh, no. um, just a, just a scrape of butter and red sauce on a. He's got a food channel. On him. Mm. Oh, absolutely <laughs> wonderful. I, I tell you what, I did for me breakfast this morning, lads. Oh, brought some salad last night. No, oh, no, no, not, not for your breakfast. <laughs> That's for me lunch. Brought some sourdough. Made some smashed avocados, a bit of lime juice, a bit of chili, uh, a couple of poached eggs, some some uh, lovely bacon. I tell you what, a bit of chili jam. Yeah. How, how do you over half live, eh? How do you over half live? <laughs> um, no, life yeah. outside Wensfield, Tom. I bet, I, bet sh- I bet he shots at Waitrose as well. <laughs> yeah. Avocados, Tom. Like these little, a, respect a these little, I know these little what an avocado is. And they've got, like, have, it's got like a big salmon, stone in the middle. I have and salmon you can, and you avocado for lunch sometimes. You, you I'll have you make, know. Um, something called guacamole with them. Then you might have to I'll have Taco Bell. Um, and our last question is, and people, this is just this is just what sums up Wolves fans at the minute. Everyone's going mad about it. Thoughts on Sweet Caroline before the game? Oh, get it gone, Mate. please! It's so <laughs> overplayed. I no, don't, who's so, bothered, man? I do. I it does not bother oh, me. One no, right, you, you know it. when Happy by Pharrell Williams was played about twenty four seven on the radio. Sweet Caroline is the football equivalent of Happy. It's played everywhere. No, nah, but Wolves did like a remix of it yesterday. Did you did you clock on? It wasn't like the normal version. They done like like their own remix of it. They, they put storms the, uh, over it. The or PA system yesterday. No, they were playing Again. all sorts. Like yeah. Mm. Nah, but I, I I don't mind. I don't mind it. Yesterday didn't work as it was an effect effectful as it had been previously. But um, I it don't bother me whatsoever. I, I, the temperature stand to... still closed. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably will be for the foreseeable. I uh, I don't want. You know what? I'd like it gone because for me that's that's a song for the boxing and a stretch an England game. But I just don't think anyone would care if we were winning games. <laughs> I just don't think people would be asked. It's just because we're not winning yeah. games. It's like tell Vinnie Clark to stop playing. You reckon he's actually like plugged his iPod Touch in and we're like, you know, what? I'm going to play Sweet Caroline now. <laughs> iPod Touch. Uh, sit, <laughs> City, sit, Man City's setup is ridiculous. Um, iPod Shuffle. Like they, they've got a whole. They, they have this. So they have this. That's all the stuff. Well, you guys will know anyway. But that, that massive park that they have outside the stadium. Yeah. yeah. Like, the whole like centre with the club shop in the middle. They've, uh, they had a, uh, for the game the other night. They had a full out DJ that was on the screen and should pop like uh, she was giving it a good go, like, probably mixing and everything. And they had the cameras all on this DJ, proper setup. Oh, it was mint. Uh, I mean, you, that video, you know that lad on holiday where it's, he's on it's, the It's commercial football, obviously. At the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Who, who, yeah. who's asked? Like, well, nah, yeah, just it's commercial like, football, for me, but... It, Justin Wilkes one was good at Wolves, the Liverpool yeah. game. Yeah. That was class. Yeah, that was, oh, that, that was, was actually, class. That was really that. good, that yeah. was. I enjoyed I that. Yeah. That was a good it was, uh, He that teased when, the liquidator yeah, and didn't play it, and I was like, yeah. come on, Justin, you wanker, play it. Do you <laughs> drop it. Drop it now. We'll, we'll, you'll have to pull, you, up the, pull up the track. <laughs> you remember when we used <laughs> to play like Led Zeppelin and be intimidating? We used to win games, and since Sweet Caroline, we haven't won a game. We haven't scored a goal at home. I think there's a direct link there. I'll tell you what was good. Great stairway to heaven against United in the Cup. Yeah. Um, oh, and it was yes. a, it was a night game, and I remember coming down the stairs oh. and lots of going playing stairway to heaven. I was like, "This is unreal. This is yeah, and yeah. it's intimidating." It's, yeah, God, yeah, I miss yeah. I miss that atmosphere genuinely. I miss that atmosphere. So when that atmosphere in the stadium. Oh, man. First season Bobby back Brown. in the Prem, the atmosphere for every game was unbelievable. I mean, it, it was just so. And then you're not a quarter final. It's the best atmosphere I've ever heard at a football game. Period. I, it was it was just absolutely manic. It was so good. I remember when we used to play Andreas Johnson, Glorious. Uh-huh. Remember that? No, do you Mate, remember that? Glorious. Oh, my, <laughs> yeah. my old yeah. boss, right, at work, used to do this thing. He did it once. He went, sorry, we, 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 I'm going off a bit of a tangent. It's, it's only quick. Um, <laughs> he just he, he went, right, close your eyes. This sounds a bit dodgy now. He went, close your eyes, Finn, and listen to this. And he, 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 you call, he closed your eyes and, and <laughs> hold this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, trying to hold this yeah. <laughs> 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 I hadn't heard the song for about 10 years and he started playing this thing and then he's going like uh, Bar- Wolves nil, Barnsley 2 
Careful of the rain outside. Here. Thank you for attending Mel and you said, he said, how depressed does it make you feel? You remember going out the stadium? We just yeah. lost the championship. Oh, you get that tune. Close, close oh, your eyes, right. Finn, and tell me if this feels like an eel or not. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that that's tune. the worst that's thing. That's, that's, never been that's, the same that's, since. I'll be honest. Honestly, everyone get it on and you'll just feel the nostalgia of getting battered by Peterborough on a Tuesday night. It's glorious. If any sponsors are still interested in getting in touch, oh. don't use that last sentence oh. as, a, as a means to uh, judge this content. Hey. This is my podcast, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'll miss my... I'll miss the the melee, he's on tatters. Bring, yeah. bring, the, uh, bring, the, bring the goal music back that we used to have in the um, <laughs> McCarthy <laughs> days. We used to play Noel Gallagher's uh, High Flying Birds as well, and um, the Escala remix of um, uh, Led Zeppelin and other strings. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. They played that. Mm. I think they played that. Yeah, Cashmere. Yeah. yeah. That was funny though, wasn't it? On Tatters when Melly told the coach to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Mel- nah, it wasn't just that though. Like yeah, Melly was talking. Like, Melly was talking at the front, and all of us like the younger lot at the back. And he was like, "I oh, know the younger lot might not be interested." And like, you know, once someone gets into a micro and fully puts it all the base, he's like, "Shut the fuck up." And they're like, "Melly, so the old coach." Melly, fuck up. What well, I'll, never, I'll, never, I'll never forget that. I've never seen Mel lose his rag like that. But yeah. they, to be fair, they were being rude. But yeah, I've heard the stories it, about hundred times. What was he saying about Nuno? Now, like we need to remember Nuno today. Like he passed away. Oh, I, can't <laughs> I, I remember Nuno. I won. I won the football card. That's all. I, that's all I took yeah. out that day. Dave, oh. Dave picked Albin on the football card and, and won and was boing boing in all the way to the king. <laughs> so I get the front, uh, the winner of the football card is West Brom. The whole coach booing. I'm like, get it. Like, the boing, winner boing. is Dave boing, AZ. Boing. Get in. <laughs> oh, I think that's the podcast for this week, lads. I don't think that there's anything else to talk about. We've covered a, a, a plethora of things, including Finn's work experience. Um <laughs> Experience around the pole. Uh, Brazzers Braz HQ. <laughs> <laughs> He's Obviously. done his first show of pole dancing. Uh, uh, how'd you get on at work experience? Yeah, he's really good. He helped me um he helped me milk milk a cow blindfold. Oh, it's really, no. really yeah. so fun. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> nah. Nah. Oh, um, just end it. Just end it before it gets even worse. Tom, thanks for joining us this week. We've managed to get oh. a word in edgeways. <laughs> I'll regret it. Yeah, no. <laughs> where, where can people just... find you? Where can people find you? Should they wish, mate? Um, you can find you can. Find, you can... <laughs> God, sorry. You can find me on Twitter at Tom underscore Parker twelve. Mm, there you go. Not under underline as Harry Mansell says. Uh, Finn, where can people oh, find you? Are you doing? Are you doing a vlog for Spurs game? Uh, no, I won't do Spurs. We're going together, aren't we? So I won't embarrass. We are, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was just, you know, I think you might yeah, get involved. Cute. Do you want to go for a pint before well, the game? Then again, then we could do. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I might get a grill it as well. I don't know. Um, I can only yeah, get one because I'm driving. Um, so. Yeah, Respect. yeah. I um, I was going to say I, last time we went there, didn't we? I said I'm not going to vlog, and then we won four 0 and Jota scored a hat trick. I was like, oh, go on then, get the camera out. <laughs> um, infamous video, no, probably yes. not. Woo! <laughs> 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 unless we slap them up. No, don't worry. Yeah. Um, where can people find you, mate? Hang on. You can find me, Finn. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this podcast is going to get <laughs> oh gonna be demonetized. Are going to get copyright <laughs> strikes now? For the... Thank you, you for following so... today. Oh. <laughs> oh, <brilliant. laughs> um, Let's see if we can get yeah, copyright, um, right, copyright um, rights for that song so we can put it as our intro for Talking Walls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Good tech, the acid test. We'd lose all our subs. Um, but no, yeah. <laughs> Finn has done everything. I'd spell Finn as mine because you spell it wrong. Yeah, I do spell it wrong. F I N E double R Z. Trying to figure that one out and then drop me a follow. If you... F... Yeah, that's right, isn't it? F I. You said F I E. That's definitely wrong. F I N. Oh, it's your channel. Yeah, you'll find it. Just find it. Google Finn as Walls. David, where can people find you? Dave has a party. D A V E A double Z O P A R D I on Twitter. And I am M Cooper Writes, Writes in Written, Twitter and Instagram, and Matt Cooper Bites on YouTube. As always, Dave. Steal the show. Go on, son. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you all for listening once again. If you're on uh, Apple Podcasts, you can leave us a review. Be sure to leave us a five star review. And obviously, if you're watching, 
uh, or listening on YouTube, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'll, we'll see you all very soon. Say goodbye, lads. See you Bye. later, guys. Have a great week. Thanks.